Baseball is America's pastime. Kids from all over grow up playing the sport with hopes of making it to the major leagues. From Little League and travel ball to high school and college, pitchers are throwing more pitches than ever before. This overuse is leading to the rapid rise in arm injuries for pitchers of all ages. To explore this relationship, we headed to the lab. I'm your host, Troy Conway, and this is Bearcat Sports Science. Baseball's a classic sport that's been around since 1846. Although it's not technically a contact sport, there's a lot of stress and strain that happens to the body, specifically in the elbow of baseball pitchers. It takes a lot of skill to throw the baseball overhand, to throw a five ounce baseball of upwards of 95 miles an hour to a six inch target that's 60 feet, six inches away. Recent studies have shown that due to baseball being a year long sport now, pitchers are throwing more innings, more games, and a lot more pitches which therefore increases their risk of elbow injury. University of Central Florida in Orlando. Oh! Uh-oh. No, no. Uh -oh. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And these kids nowadays are throwing overhand, sidearm, and submarine. We're here in Gappy Hall at Willamette University where us at Bearcat Sports Science are trying to compare the differences between the three common throwing techniques of overhand, sidearm, and submarine. On this episode of Bearcat Sports Science, we're going to look through three lenses of biomechanics, EMG, linear motion, and angular kinematics. We're going to try and put some numbers to the data and decide which is the safer technique of the three for baseball players of all ages. Our subject is now ready to uh, be measured for EMG data collection. EMG data collection will be used using these two electrodes placed on the biceps brachii, the lateral triceps, uh, the extensor carpal nares, and the flexor carpal nares of, of his throwing arm. Uh, before we can unpack the electrodes, we first must sterilize the areas so that there's no interference for the data collection used by the electrodes. Uh, after uh, the area has been swabbed, we will allow it to dry and then place the two electrodes on the muscle after anatomically finding it. We will place the two electrodes on the muscle next to each other for greater surface area so that we can get a good accurate measurement of the muscle activity during the throw. Uh, to, in order to collect the data, transmitters such as these will be attached along the pads when they're attached and held on uh, through a sticky surface onto the arm and the transmitter will then transmit the signal to this receiver which is hooked up to this computer which will uh, push the data, the EMG data collected from the electrodes onto the computer so that we can analyze it to get a graph similar to this one. So this is some of the EMG data we collected in the lab. EMG data actually measures the muscle activity it requires to perform a specific movement. In our case, we measured the throwing motion, and that measured the EMG data of the flexor muscles of the forearm as well as the tricep of the upper arm. A prior study showed that the activation of these two groups of muscles acts as a stabilization muscles for the ulnar collateral ligament, which is actually the most common ligament torn in baseball pitchers. Now let's dive into the data, shall we? 
Now let's take a look at how our data coincides with some of that the previous research on the topic. By looking at this graph, we're not most interested in the peaks, but rather in the average EMG for all of the conditions. This means that the activity of the biceps throughout the throwing motion. The submarine had the highest average EMG, then the sidearm, and then the overhead. That means that the biceps was most active in the submarine condition. The average EMG activity for the submarine condition was the highest, then the overhead, and then the sidearm. The flexor muscles of the forearm provide dynamic support to valgus stress in the throwing elbow. These forces also help resist valgus stress during early arm acceleration, and they help produce wrist flexion during ball release. The average EMG activity for the triceps is very similar between the sidearm and the submarine throwing condition, but the overhead had the lowest peak EMG activity and average EMG activity for the triceps. This means that it requires more muscle activation to throw submarine and sidearm, which can cause fatigue in the pitcher and put them at risk for injury. The subject is now ready to have joint angular position data collected. In order to do so, we needed a high-speed camera, and this is a Casio camera that measures at 240 frames per second so that we can track the wrist motion through each of the different throwing conditions. In order to measure that, we have reflective ball markers that would be attached to the wrist with a dark colored pre-wrap so that there's a contrast between the light reflecting off the ball uh, and the dark pre-wrap in the back so that we can clearly see the ball through the, all three motions. Uh, once the, the video is collected, we have to digitize at each frame uh, the wrist motion through so that we can get a clear picture of each of the different motions through, through, through the throw. That way, we can analyze the data on Excel. So this graph here shows the horizontal positioning of the wrist during all three motions of pitching, including the overhead, submarine, and sidearm. As you can see here, they're vaguely similar. This graph shows the vertical positioning against time two, showing that they're also pretty vaguely similar in the same thing. But here, as we put vertical against horizontal wrist position, we can distinctly see the three different types of throwing motion. This blue line here represents the overhead motion. The sidearm motion is represented by the yellow line up here at the top. And we see with the red motion, the submarine, showing the greatest vertical displacement from top to bottom. The overhead and sidearm conditions have similar maximum vertical displacements, but the submarine condition has the highest vertical displacement. This makes sense because in all three conditions, you start in the same place, but the submarine condition has the lowest release point. The maximum horizontal displacement is similar for both overhand and submarine, but the sidearm condition has the highest horizontal displacement. This makes sense because it has the farthest lateral release. The fact that there are differences in horizontal and vertical displacement between the three conditions proves that there is a difference in the throwing motions. Because the shoulder complex has three degrees of freedom and the elbow, forearm, and wrist have two degrees of freedom, the throwing arm has many unique positional combinations. We studied overhead, sidearm, and submarine throwing, but there are a variety of different arm angles that a pitcher can use to throw a baseball. Our subject is now ready to have joint angular velocity collected. To do so, we will use the myomotion technology. These transmitters will be placed on the first thoracic vertebrae. The upper arm, which will be allow, allow us to measure the, the velocity of the shoulder, and then the back of the form, which will allow us to measure the elbow. Uh, these transmitters will be placed into these straps, which will go on each of the, the different areas I talked about, and they will be placed firmly so that it creates move, or it stops movement of the transmitter during the violent motion of the throw. Uh, these transmitters will send a signal to this Naraxon receiver, which again is hooked up to the computer to collect the data for us to analyze and give us a picture or data like this, which will give us the joint angular velocity and a 3D representation of, of the movement of the throw. Uh, 
Uh, this, is, this data is very important for us because there are six main phases of throwing. Uh, we are very interested in the arm acceleration phase, which is the point at peak external rotation, the ball release. Uh, this motion specifically puts the most stress on the arm, so by collecting this data we can see if the overhead, sidearm, or submarine condition, places, which of those places the greatest stress on the arm. As you can see in this graph that shows the shoulder joint angular velocity of the three conditions, they all have very similar peaks and valleys, which show the maximum external and internal rotation of the shoulder. However, the main difference I want to point out is that with the sidearm and submarine conditions, this change happens a lot earlier in the time condition, which could put a lot more stress on the elbow. This graph combines both the shoulder external rotation and the EMG data, which you can see has a lot more muscle activation than the previous graph. But what points out to me here is that the big peak in the biceps activation happens in the submarine throwing condition, which makes sense due to with its underhand motion, you see more of a flexion as opposed to the other two have more of an extension motion. This final graph shows the shoulder external rotation as opposed to the internal rotation and they're vaguely similar with all three conditions however the overhand condition as seen in blue here has more of an external rotation on the shoulder than the other two conditions which also could place a lot more unneeded stress on the elbow all three conditions had similar peak internal rotation velocities which means that there was no discernible difference between the three this could be due to the same subject performing all three throwing conditions and not having a certain amount of internal or external shoulder flexibility. The subject has a constant muscle strength and arm segment length, so it makes sense that he would produce the same angular velocity. The magnitude of force needed to produce injury most likely varies among levels of competition due to differences in muscle mass and tissue strength. This is why college and professional pitchers are at a greater risk for injury because they produce a greater varus torque. Due to the limitations of our study, we are not able to directly measure the amount of stress placed on the elbow during the three different throwing conditions. This caused us to have to extrapolate the data in order to draw conclusions about the three different throwing conditions. The EMG data shows muscle activity in the arm during the throw. It was found that the submarine and sidearm condition had the greatest amount of muscle activity during the throw. This can cause fatigue which can lead to an increased risk of injury in pitchers. Linear position showed us that there was a significant difference between each of the different throwing conditions. Our joint angular velocity data was similar between all three conditions, but previous research has shown that the sidearm condition places the greatest amount of valgus torque on the elbow. This is most likely due to an early trunk rotation causing the arm to lag behind during ball release. Kids and professional pitchers have the same throwing mechanics and these do not change over time. This means it's important for kids to learn proper throwing mechanics and then as they grow older and develop, they can add muscle and thus get a greater throwing velocity. You hear that kids? You keep working on your overhand throwing technique, and you'll be in the big leagues in no time. Coming up next week on Bearcat Sports Science, we dive into the different ground reaction forces of different pitches throughout the league to see how they can throw so hard.